then you have him and his power in you, is what I try to tell people. Yeah. You, if, if, if the same spirit, now, if you don't believe this, you just need to look it up. I don't know exactly where it is, but uh, Google it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Wow. See, if we get that in our mind and in, in, in our heart, and we start believing into that, then we say, you know what, I'm carrying with me the Spirit of God. Exactly. He wants to partner with me in affecting people, changing people, helping people, healing people, setting people free. He wants to partner with me. What an honor that the God of the universe wants to partner with a schmo like me. But that's what he does. That's what he does. And I, I you know... In essence, I am a show. I'm not putting myself down. I'm just an ordinary guy, ordinary dude, right? But think about it. The 12 apostles, the 12 great apostles were ordinary dudes. They were schmoes. I mean, when you look at them, they're, they're, they're like the Marx Brothers. They're, they're like an arcane <laughs> comedy. You know, one guy wants to get in on Jesus' good side, and, and, and another guy wants to call down fire and actually kill people, right? <laughs> Should we call down fire and uh, from heaven against these people? <laughs> Jesus is saying, you don't know what you're talking about. So, they were regular schmoes, and we're regular schmoes, but isn't it great that God partners with regular mm -hmm. schmoes mm -hmm. like us? Amen. Okay, I'm Amen. Gonna, right? mm -hmm. So here's where that theology that God is not doing that today comes from. We pray for somebody, they don't get healed, therefore we come to the conclusion that God is not healing people. You know what it's like? It's like, it's a theology of disappointment. Mm -hmm. Because I was disappointed, therefore I'm going to uh, make my experience my theology about mm -hmm. God, instead of looking at the Word of God, because if people would study the New Testament, they would see that Jesus healed every single person who came to him without exception. You cannot find in the New Testament any place where Jesus refused to heal someone who came to him. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't heal everybody at the pool of Bethesda, right? because I feel he was led to one person there to heal, but everyone who came to him was healed. So, how do we get this theology that God is not healing today, or he doesn't choose to, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to heal everybody. Look, maybe not everybody gets healed, and I still don't know the reason why everybody doesn't get healed, but that's the goal of our lives. That's mm -hmm. the goal of my life, is to see everyone healed because that's the model I'm basing my life and my theology on, is the Jesus model. Jesus never said, sorry, it's not your day. He never said, you're too sinful. He never said, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I can't, I can't heal you today. Uh, he never said, oh no, God is correcting you. Mm -hmm. He's disciplining you. Mm -hmm. He's building your character. He never said that to anybody. And why should I think I should say yeah. that to anybody? Why? See, that goes against, goes against the scriptures, which says Jesus is what? The same? Yesterday, yesterday today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, Either God has changed his mind about healing, or we have to change our minds about healing. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Something else that he's saying here is this. He, Jesus learns that John the Baptist was beheaded. A disappointment? You know, I'm not, I wasn't Jesus. I don't know how he was thinking. Uh, I'm sure he didn't want John the Baptist beheaded, but... Obviously, he didn't do anything about it because of a bigger plan. I don't, I don't understand it, but he's showing us how to deal with disappointment. See, I've had to deal with disappointment in this class. I mean, I've dealt with victory where people like Margarita gets healed of terminal cancer and Laurel gets healed of systemic lupus and, 
and uh, um, uh, Debbie Lynn gets healed of scoliosis, mm -hmm. and I've I, you know I've dealt with victory, but I had to deal with defeat also when somebody we prayed for in our class gets worse and dies. And here's what I have to do, and he's talking about the same thing. And Jesus got away, got with the Father, and prayed it out with him. That's what I had to do too. Because here's what I could do. I could make that disappointment just cancel my assignment in life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do, and that's how we build these theologies that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. That God is not healing anymore. Mm -hmm. Or he sent this problem on you to teach you or build your character and so forth. So that's what I have to do when I have a disappointment. I don't know all the reasons why everybody is not healed, but I have to put it in the category, I don't understand, I don't know, but I'm going forward. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for the next one because I believe that every person I pray for, God wants to heal. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, I shouldn't be praying. You get it? Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of a prayer would I be if I was praying for Noel uh, with the idea in mind, well, I don't think God really wants to heal Noel. You know? So I'm just going to do a perfunctory, oh God, please heal Noel. She's such a good person. You know, one of those prayers. Or please, 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 please heal no. No. If, if, I, if, if in my heart I doubted that God wanted her healed, I shouldn't even be praying. Yeah. yeah. Because it's just, it's a crap prayer. <laughs> you know, people say, uh, well, what do you do after you pray? I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather yeah. pray for no. Mm -hmm. I'd rather speak to the problem, like Jesus said, speak to the mountain and say, be healed in the name of Jesus, lay my hands on her, transfer the power of Christ in me to her, and then walk away believing. Walk away believing. Even if I don't see anything take place in the moment. Because you wouldn't believe how many times I've heard, oh John, you know, you prayed for me, and after you prayed, nothing happened. But the next day, I woke up and I was healed. That's what happened mm -hmm. to uh, Laurel with systemic lupus. I had a guest guest speaker minister in with me. She gets prayer. Nothing took place. She didn't feel one bit better, but the next day, all her symptoms were gone. Mm -hmm. You know? I heard from a, a lady in a homeless uh, uh, outreach that I used to go to. She called me over, she said, hey John, I just wanted to let you know that last year you prayed, for... now I've been coming to this homeless outreach regularly, right? And she'd been there regularly over the past year. She said, you know, I just wanted to let you know that you prayed for me, I had cancer and I was healed. And I was saying, oh, when were you gonna tell me, you know? <laughs> you know, but that kind of thing. So. Uh, Bill Johnson and Chris Gore say things like, you know, expect something to happen because it's impossible for us to pray and absolutely nothing to happen. We might not see what's going on. See, like for Roxy, I'm going to believe Roxy is healed and I'm going to thank God for her healing whenever I think about her mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm going to be a man of faith mm -hmm. and believe. And praise also brings out the healing Praise is wonderful. Praise is really, really powerful. It's actually, it's actually a weapon. Yes. Praise and thanksgiving is a weapon against the enemy. Yeah. 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 Good thing, okay. Um, what he's talking about, and, and if any of you have experienced uh, loss in your life, uh, personal loss, uh, physical difficulties, financial difficulties, in other words, something that you know, the enemy just won. He won one. He beat you up in some area. He's talking about the Old Testament principle that if a, if a thief is caught, he's made to repay seven times what he stole. And that could be a scriptural principle for us that whatever we've suffered loss 
in, in our life that the enemy has stolen from us, we can claim sevenfold reward. I mean, in, in the example of Job, it says everything was returned to him in, in more measure than he had before, right? So that's the example of God restoring what the enemy has stolen, you know? There's the scripture that says what, what the enemy has meant for evil, God has turned it around for good. So whatever that is in your life, why don't you just close your eyes for a minute and say, say to the Lord, Lord, someone I've been stolen from in this area or that area or another area, and I am believing and trusting you for restoration, sevenfold restoration in my life. Sevenfold restoration of that thing that has been stolen from me. And just pray that with the Lord. And I would even maybe even write it down when you um, get home and say, I am believing for sevenfold restoration of what the enemy has stolen in my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen.